three. What is going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Mask and Health Solutions Podcast, where I am born. <laughs> I am born. I am joined by Brad Jared, who's going to share a little bit about empowering men. You know, talking more about his story, about being overweight about dealing with finances, overcoming all that good stuff, and a little bit of modeling too. But more than anything, we want to learn more about empowerment.co. And I'm super excited to have this conversation. But first and foremost, Brad, how are you, man? Doing great. Thanks so much for having me, CJ. Hey, man, you know, I've been looking forward to this conversation for a little while, because when it comes to empowering men, like we we're just talking off air, you know, it does seem like there's a lot of bullshit involved in, in regards to the taboo and, you know, everybody, you know, trying to like shy it away, like you shouldn't talk about these things, whatever the case may be, a lot of dumb stuff involved. But I find that for a lot of guys, including myself, we're usually motivated by pain. So I kind of want to just get to know your story and what kind of started this whole process of bettering yourself, you know, from the very get go, I guess, from when you were a kid. Yeah, man. Well, I was originally born in South Africa and I grew up in Tampa, Florida. And so a couple things starting off was just I'm an only child of immigrant parents that were way too old. So I was I felt lost <laughs> at a very young age just because I'm like, all right, I can't look up to my parents because they don't know what's going on. They're new to this country. I, I'm resorting to food a lot because food became my friend. It became the thing that I could turn to and find comfort in. I could always go up to my room, play video games, something you don't know too much about. I know you don't play video games. Yeah. As a kid, I was brownies and soda and this. And that just kind of, uh, that was my my com uh, my safety blanket. You know, yeah. that, that just kept me comfortable. And then as a kid, I was overweight. But then I'd find a couple of friends and I'd start to learn the American ways, uh, American football and basketball, and this is how you dress and this is how you act from my friends and then their parents. But there was a certain point where I was in middle school, but really high school where I said, and I remember this moment where I, I was being honest with myself, what kind of girl could I get? You know, what league was I in? And I remember this girl who was very sweet, but overweight, not attractive and thinking, yeah, we're about the same level. And I wasn't <laughs> cool with that, you know? That's like, because I saw the popular kids and they would wear the Abercrombie and they would go, uh, you know, they would always be the best looking and they were so confident. And then their parents had boats and they'd go out on the lake. And I was like, man, that seems so cool. And that's when I was like, you know, what? I got to at least lose weight. I might not know uh, the right type of hairstyle that's in right now or my parents might not be able to afford Abercrombie clothes but <laughs> I could at least lose weight and I remember this was probably 1996 1995 when my parents first got a gateway computer so I'm, I'm 37 right now but I, I would look online I'd, I'd look in these old men's health magazines trying to find oh, out yeah. what I have to do and I, I'm a kid so I don't have a gym I don't have things like that but my first ever diet was just four bowls of cereal a day. That's how bad it was. It was like, because I was eating so bad that four bowls of cereal a day, I was just losing weight left and right. And so, but the cool thing is that because I didn't have popularity, I didn't have those things, seeing what effort over time would do, I would see results. Yeah. And especially being in an environment that was testing my my willpower my mom would still bring me uh the brownies and the soda and everything and to be able to overcome that and throw the brownies in the trash say no to the delicious garlic bread that was presented oh. to me every day it, it made me understand okay I, I i still am in control and so when i lost weight there it eventually led to a modeling career which was the ultimate external validation it was saying hey you had these raw materials and you turned it into something worthy of being recruited into being a model. And the modeling career was never as cool or glamorous or even lucrative as I would have hoped. I never really made it to that upper echelon of models. But what I found is that with my parents' immigrant mentality and with my natural proclivities and skill sets, I was helping my friends that are models with their money because they would be booking the campaigns and the big jobs that I was I was going for and I was envious uh towards them about but then they would be blowing all their money on bottle service and do, <laughs> doing all these like stupid young things and I'm like dude yeah. it is 2012 it is 2013 it is 2014 like real estate is so low right now I mean you yeah. can just put this down and get a uh, just a deposit on a house and you could be doing this and so 
uh, it kind of led me down this path of helping people with their finance because I found it very easy to me. And also because I didn't succeed as a model, I wasn't just throwing money all the time. So I didn't, mm. I couldn't even be frivolous if I wanted to, but then I would help these other models and actors and artists. And then everyday people just become a bit better with their money, be a bit more intentional, use opportunity costs to see different scenarios out. And so uh, that, that, that was a pretty cool uh, part of the story. But then when I was in my early thirties, I, you know, I, I was already eating right. I was working out. I was, you know, if, if it was on a live strong article, if there's a live strong article about something, I would do it. So yeah. it was take the uh, vitamin D and the fish oil and the grass fed grass finished beef and all this. And yet I felt so lousy when I was around 32 years old. I had no motivation for my career, no motivation to work out. My joints hurt, all these things hurt. And I was like, what in the world is going on? I feel like a 70 year old man, yet I'm in Los Angeles and I'm doing all these things right. And when I got my blood work done, it showed that I had the testosterone level of basically a 70 year old man. So it was around Jeez. 275, 276, something like that at 32 years old. And it, you know, if you're not getting sleep and if you're smoking a lot of weed and you're drinking and you're doing all these things, yeah, it could be low, but when you're doing so many things right, that's when you, you don't understand. And so uh, long story short, I ended up getting on TRT and that was such a life changer for me because then I felt 25 again with all these healthy practices I'm already having. Yeah. And then the more I looked into that industry, the more I thought, wow, this is, there's a, there's a lot of things that could be done in this industry to really empower men because this is such a life changer going from low testosterone to high testosterone, not just sexually, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally. And so uh, the whole longevity and anti-aging space has been very fascinating the last couple of years. And uh, just in terms of helping men in so many different ways, because right now uh, I know women have it tough. They've always had it tough, but men have it pretty tough as well right now. Well, I think so too. But the weird thing about what you just said there was like, you're doing everything right. So it's like, why do the test levels go so low? Because I mean, the more I've researched into that too, it's like, you, man, we got PBAs, we got, you know, you got PUFAs, you got all kinds of different things that are like in our food, it's in, in our fragrances, like paraben, like it's everywhere. Like I almost feel like there is almost a war on masculinity. Like I've seen it because I've, I've, you know, like I'm, I'm also into the conspiratorial side of things. And before I would see it more from like, nah, man, that's too crazy. But now I'm like, fuck, man, I don't know at this point. At this point, I'm like, it just seems like maybe they're just cutting corners and they use these ingredients. But at the same time, I'm like, the fact that they know that it's so harmful for us dudes, and yet they're still like putting it into our foods. Because the thing that I find shocking is the fact that you're doing everything right. And you still had like testosterone levels that were that low. Yeah. And I mean, in my case, I wouldn't be surprised if it was genetic, because when I look at my dad, he's always been this old, tired man in my eyes, even in his 40s. And yet his brother, who's younger than him, is very vibrant, has all this energy, has all this vitality. And so I, I wouldn't be surprised if for me it was genetic. But regardless, testosterone has gone down every decade uh, for the same age group. So I remember... Uh, seeing this study that showed that men that are in their 60s in the 1960s have the same level of testosterone as men in their 20s today yeah. which is insane so that means our grandfathers were or these badasses with high testosterone <laughs> and yet it's just gone down more and more and yes the 5g and then we have all the hormone disruptors in the food and in the lotions and everything else yeah. so no matter what that's where it's going and whether it's just here in this country, because this is what we care about, or internationally, you know, you see this in a lot of other countries, it's still going down. Regardless, it's a huge issue. And when you have low testosterone, I think a lot of people just associate it with muscle gain and, yeah. and fat loss and stuff like that. Hey, I want to look good physically and I want to be able to get it up and I want to be able to you know, make love for as long as I'd like. That is the tip of the iceberg because yeah. when you have low testosterone mentally you you're just like what's the point what, what's the point of doing that what's the point why why even bother your whole outlook on life is just uh what's the use it's everything seems like 
climbing Mount Everest, going up a flight of stairs, uh, having a couple sales calls, whatever it is, it just seems like such a big mountain to climb. And you, you're lacking the motivation or, or, or the drive to even do it. And so when when you go from low to high, you just realize, wow, this is way more mental and way more emotional. And it's to the point where I, I tell my friends, if I, I, I prioritize my TRT as the number three thing that I pay for. If there's a roof over my head and if there's food on the table, this is number three. Yeah. Above my cell phone, above insurance, above all these other things. I just want to make sure that this is taken care of because it's that important to me. So, um, you know, it's a lot like electricity. You could have a mansion filled with all sorts of TVs and AC and a uh, heated pool and all this stuff. But if the electricity is out, what what is the house worth? And, and so, mm -hmm. you know, my analogy is pretty much testosterone is electricity. When the electricity is out, you know how important it is. But when it's working and it's never been out, you don't realize how crucial it is to just a functioning home. Which is, I mean, that kind of brings me to the point that a lot of guys are suffering with that. And they don't even realize that the lights are out. Right, which is kind of messed up. It's like, yo, man, the lights are kind of working. They're kind of off. But I don't really know, man. I can't really tell. Which is brings you to the other point that I was thinking when you were mentioning that. When you get a dude at Empower Men and you start working with somebody and you can kind of tell that this dude's lethargic. He looks like he's kind of slow. What's the first thing you usually ask them? Like, hey, is it lifestyle? Is it alcohol? How do you go about kind of figuring out where this guy's starting point, I guess, should be? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, so I've been in coaching for years. My business partner, Gil, he's been a health coach for many years. And we, we both have a passion for longevity and optimal health and just how everything you know gets tougher when we get older. Plus, with society, it gets tougher anyways, just because of all the stuff in our environment. But we start with every client with just a very thorough questionnaire. We got to know is it your laziness? Is it your stress? Is it this that is causing you to be unhealthy? And nine out of 10 times, that is it that needs to be addressed first. But after that, and after we say, okay, this is the food, I know you're busy, but this is how you can do it on the road. I know uh, your finances are uh, an issue right now. This is how you can be healthier on a budget uh, without much time. And then from there, the next step is, okay, we have partner clinics where we have discounts uh, that you can get your blood work done. We just want to get your blood work because we don't want to su suggest any supplements, suggest any uh, protocols that could be either not right for you or just cost a lot of money. And it's not really the, the best answer. Yeah. We want to make sure that your blood work is done so we see exactly what's going on. And so we partnered with a couple of clinics that offer really great prices on their blood work and offer our, our men discounts on their peptide therapy, their TRT, their, their supplementation, things like that. And uh, to us, it's just, look, not every man gets their blood drawn every year, or every two years. Needles have always been my biggest fear. I've passed out giving blood. Whenever I do it, I, I tell them, you got to lay me flat on my back. I have a <laughs> wet towel over my face. I, I, I'm like, I'm breathing heavily. My other hand is is like clinching something. I'm I'm that person that went over 10 years without getting my blood drawn. So I resisted it at, at all costs. Yeah. But it's one of those things where you need that snapshot to see, hey, here's where my health is. And the more biomarkers, the better, because a lot of these TRT clinics, they'll only show a couple of the required biomarkers just to get you on the TRT versus, hey, hold on a second, here's the entire picture, you might be able to just have some more magnesium and vitamin D and other things in your diet, that's going to raise your testosterone and help you feel a lot more balanced and optimal without resorting to something like TRT. Uh, but you know, again, that that's me going on a tangent. It all starts with just the most thorough questionnaire and understanding, hey, who are you? Tell me about your lifestyle. Tell me about your diet. Tell me about uh, your stress levels, all these different things. And then we'll go from there. Yeah, no, I mean, because you kind of have to have that picture. Like when I'll be working with a client, I'll be like, all right, well, you got equipment, you got no equipment. All right, cool. You know, you got to keep kind of figuring out which algorithm you got to design for set person, right? And it's got to be appropriate to their needs. Because if not, you're right, you could start giving them like TRT. And it's like, well, all you really needed was more magnesium. <laughs> you know, maybe it touches zinc or something, right? 
Yeah. And I mean, everyone's different too. And it's, it's like, we work with busy fathers, busy professionals, people that are like, look, I got maybe two hours a week where I could work out. All right. Well, I mean, if that's the case, I don't have kids, so I can't, I'm not, I can't say, Hey, well, you need to work out five days a week and you need to have this, mm, this yeah. salmon grilled salmon salad three times a week and everything needs to be organic. It's like, Hey, I, I don't know where you are with your finances. I don't know where you are with your career pursuits. Everything's got to be personalized. But the point is that health and money is one of those things that they, they're going to be with us until we die. Right. Yeah. When our health disappears, we, we're dead. Right. Yeah. And yeah. then when our, our finances are always going to be there. So whether we're financially independent, that's great. But it's it's something that every single day a bill needs to be paid. Some transaction needs to be made. So it's one yeah. of those things where even if you are a single father of three kids and you're struggling to get by and all these things, if you're just getting marginally better every day, if you're just understanding, oh, I got a five minutes here, I got eight minutes there. I got, you know, like if I just make this one little tweak right here, every day we get to start over. And as long as we're just moving in that right direction, even if it takes a year, two years, five years, it, it because this is something that we're going to have to deal with, for the rest of our life, we might as well just go down that path of just improving slightly in these areas. Exactly. And it's kind of like, I mean, and I, I believe in this law in that if you make those minor tweaks, those minor changes in trajectory, it can change the entire trajectory of your life, right? Because it's kind of like if you steer it just a couple of degrees to the left to the right, whatever the case may be, it's like you could either end up with a heart attack or you end up like living for another 20 years. And it's really that simple. It's It seems kind of harsh, but at the same time, I think it's something that we do need to discuss more at length because a lot of people are just kind of charging into the direction that I think is probably the worst, has the worst po possible outcomes for them. And it's very simple in that it's like, hey, behavioral changes. Instead of reaching for that Coca-Cola, reach for a water, you know, something small. You know, instead of like sitting down and watching TV at the end of the day, maybe you go for a walk, you know, do a half an hour walk, something like that. But it's usually the minor changes that you're 100% right will actually change the way our lives will look, you know, in the long run. And I think that, yo, those minor tweaks, a little bit of personal development here and there are, are usually what lead to like a good full life, you know, at the end of it. But if not, you're almost just... I think a lot of people are just kind of caught in the mud and it's kind of hard to see because it's like, I can't go in there and really change your mindset. I can't force you to develop yourself. But when you're working with somebody, it's almost like, I just got to start with little tweaks, little habits here and there, and then just start building on it. Yeah, dude, it's funny you mentioned that. And when you said the the steer left or right, I immediately thought of Atomic Habits, which is just oh, one it's of a great the, book. Yeah, such a great book and so practical. I mean, there's great reads like, oh, that was a nice story. But then there's holy crap, this is very practical. And if I just apply this, my life will be so much better. And it's one yeah. of those books. So we even have, when we have the accelerator calls uh, with the one-on-one -on -one calls at the beginning, based on where they're at, we'll either tell them something like, here's a David Goggins book, whether <laughs> it, either read it or listen to it on Audible. And for most people, it's, hey, you drive to work, you drive yeah. here, just listen to it. Reading takes a lot of time, takes a lot of focus. And a lot of people that want to read feel like it's a bit of a burden nowadays just because mm -hmm. there's such hectic schedules and going everywhere. But listening to audibles, to podcasts like this, it's phenomenal. And just having someone say, all right, this one atomic habit of listening to atomic habits on the way to work, it's a four and a half hour listen. Just do that for one week and you, you, you apply that to one little thing in your health, one little thing in your exercise, one little thing in your mindset, and imagine where you'll be in a year and two years yeah. and three years. And so it's all about the compounding effect. It's not, not about just the little change. It's remember, you're building off of it. Just like if you invest in a mutual fund for the next uh, 30 years, you just put that money in there and, and you don't touch it. You just put in, let's say $5,000 in a mutual fund and you, you leave it alone, well, the average returns are 9 to 10% a year yeah. overall. And so some years, it might be low, some years it might be higher, but you're not going to see much for five years or 10 years. But if you look in that account in 25 and 30 years, it would have compounded to six figures just because the interest would have 
earned interest and that interest would have earned interest and it keeps going. Same thing with our habits, same thing with our relationships. It's that we just got to start small because it'll compound, it'll grow if you give it enough time. And so that's where the whole trajectory thing is just so important. And the, the example in the book is if you fly from Los Angeles to New York, but the pilot changes the, yeah, the steering degrees, wheel just yeah. three degrees, he winds up in Washington, D.C. But when you're leaving LAX and you change it three degrees, you're not really much different. You know, you're, you're mm -hmm. okay. The, the, some desert over here, some desert over there, flying over uh, <laughs> this this city of Utah versus the, the suburb of the city of Utah. But then when you go far enough, all of a sudden you're in D.C. versus New York City. Okay, mm -hmm. you see what time can do. And so that's why just these little habits, hey, this worked. I can... I can do this little thing again and again. Okay, now this little thing worked. Okay, and then years later, you're a whole whole new person. Yeah, dude, and it's it's funny because now I want to talk about the financial side of things, but it's weird because I, I started, you know, looking into the stock market and I'm like, okay, well, I'm like, you know, I tried a couple times before in the past and I, I was just looking for unicorns. I'm not gonna lie, I was a unicorn hunter. I was like, all right, cool. I'm gonna invest in Wish. It all went to shit, you know, but luckily I was able to claim that as a tax return. And then I started looking more into like, okay, what's the smartest way to go about it? Warren Buffett said it was all about looking. It's almost like the way you should treat the stock market is like looking at paint dry. You know, if you want the really slow conservative ways about doing things. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I looked into ETFs. I started getting into that. I started developing my portfolio and I'm like, wow, like he's right but it is really boring. You know, it's like you're seeing five, 10% here, you know, and it's not bad. However, over the span of 10 years, I ran the numbers and I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is incredible. You know, the compound interest, the dividends, all that, that just ties in. And to your point, it just kind of compounds on top of itself. And I kind of feel like whether it's working out or anything else in life, it's almost, it follows the same principles, right? It's kind of like you can chase after the unicorns, you'll probably crash and burn. However, if you kind of go slow and steady and you focus on investing into the right things, you just give it time. If you're patient, usually for the most part, you know, things are going to go good. There's dips, there's highs, there's lows. And over time, it's like, okay, well, let's take a step back and see how it looks over the span of 10, 20, or even 30 years, right? And, and that's kind of like one of the things that I'm like, it's really strange to see a correlation from the stock market into like the real world. And it makes perfect sense. But it was it really blew my mind, right? Because I'm like, I had never viewed it from that perspective. I just saw people chasing Teslas and this, that, and the other, right? But, you know, it's it's something that you can really take into and apply to any aspect of life. But the one thing that I did want to ask you next, because I had it here, was the three simple yet powerful money principles that you teach to reduce debt, get ahead of their finances. What are they? I mean, dude, I, I hate budgeting. I'm the, the most <laughs> simple person. And I, I was like, look, and, and, you know, because I have a very analytical mind. So I, I got to go through my lens of just, this is what makes sense. And the, the first thing is just eliminate waste, right? Just yeah. eliminate waste, which is you got a parking ticket. Well, you got a parking ticket because there's probably not a system in place for you to remember when you need to move your car on street sweeping day or when to add more money. So there's there's the things where you go that provided zero value. You buy a you buy a green juice at eleven. At, these are L.A. thing. You know, I'm coming yeah, from yeah. L.A. So you're buying like a twelve dollar green juice from Creation, and it sits in your fridge, and then all of a sudden it goes bad, and you throw it out. Okay, that's just waste. So eliminate waste first, and usually it just comes down to a lack of mindfulness. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, what? Uh, I have a late fee here. Uh, I have apps that I don't use. I have subscriptions that I don't use. All these little things where you go, you're working to give your money away to something that does zero for you. So that's the first thing, because that's just going to feel better too when you eliminate that waste. And I mean, I, I want to say 40% of food in the US is is thrown out, and which is oh. absurd. But even if that's restaurants, even if that's catered events and, and things out of your control, whatever food you're wasting, it's just a matter of, okay, why, why was this thrown out? Why didn't I eat this on time? Do I need to start buying some more frozen vegetables versus fresh? Do I need to be doing this? So we want to do that first. We want to just eliminate as much waste as possible. And then just be, number two is just more attention and intention. And when you know the power of compound interest, when you see that uh, opportunity cost is what the Charlie Munger and these, yeah. these top investors preach is 
the top people focus on opportunity cost, which is if I say yes to this, what am I saying no to? If I say yes in terms of time, if I say yes to a two hour movie, what am I saying no to? And the answer is every single thing you could possibly do in those two hours. So same thing with if I spend $100 here, what am I saying no to? Well, if you put in a compound calculator, $100 in a low fee index fund with 10% returns, and just let it sit there for 30 years, okay, it's going to be $28,000 or whatever amount. I'm saying no to that potential earning. I'm saying no to 10 personal development books. I'm saying no to uh, four months gym membership. I'm saying no to a, an hour massage. I'm saying no to this. So the more you understand opportunity cost, the more you understand the power of compound interest, the more you'll want to be focused on making better decisions with your money because you see what's at stake. What's at stake yeah. is, my God, this could grow to a, a good amount. This could be used towards something that really helps me with my goals or really brings me joy. Maybe it's, I want to treat myself, but there's a certain uh, treat that costs a hundred dollars that really brings me a lot of joy versus just buying this blue sweater, which I probably won't wear anyway. <laughs> so attention and intention and the third one is just invest heavily. And for me, the best investment and this Warren Buffett even says this: the best investment you can make is in yourself. I 100% believe it. No matter what happens, you are with yourself until the day you die. Yeah. And the more skills, soft skills, technical skills, the more uh, communities, relationships, things like that, that we have, the more that we could lose it all financially, yet be able to rebuild it in a heartbeat and that's because if we think like jeff bezos if we had that mindset if we had the the connections of elon musk if we had all these things we'd be able to go from zero to a billion very quickly so yeah. for me it's uh the invest heavily is in yourself then it's in high quality relationships and it's also because i want to say there's there's studies and i i, I know i've heard tony robbins mention this but the people that live the longest have the best relationships. So usually it's when the grandparents are put into a home and they're away from their kids, their family. They don't feel like there's a reason to live anymore. But for, for example, my grandparents uh, in this little island of Mauritius, which is off of Africa, yeah. my grandmother lived till 101, my grandfather 109. And they wow. are surrounded by their kids, their their grandkids, and this massive family. And I can't say that was 100% the reason why they live so long. But when you're in your 90s and 100s, and you're surrounded by all these people that look up to you and love you, you have a reason to wake up every day. So uh, yeah, to summarize, it's invest in yourself. If you can make more money with these skills, that's going to be a lot better than in, a, in an investment where it's out of your control or it's a conservative investment where you're going to have to wait 25, 30 years for it to really mm -hmm. compound, but to learn a skill today and make an extra 10% or 20% a year because of that skill, that's going to be a lot better for you. Yeah. I remember, cause I think it was Napoleon Hill's think and grow rich, or maybe it was the richest man in Babylon where he said the same thing too, where it's like always invest in yourself. And, and that's one of the things where, I mean, I really took that to heart maybe about five or six years ago, let's say. But uh, it's one of those concepts that I think we overlook too often because for some reason we just think like, oh, you know, either I have a skill or I don't, which is a really stupid approach. But I find that a lot of us really fall into that like trap of, oh, I'm just not good at that, you know, versus actually investing the time, investing the money. And obviously the opportunity cost comes with it. You're almost like, okay, well, I got to separate with my money to develop myself here. However, it's totally worth it if I stick with it, right? It's kind of like getting that certification or actually talking to a coach, actually, you know, talking to a financial advisor, getting set straight are things that I think are highly worth it. And for me, it's kind of like one of the biggest things that I've at this stage of my life, because I got two kids, a wife, I'm always busy. The one thing that I want and I fight for more than anything else is time. So for me, it's, it's like if I want something or develop a skill, and I don't know it, I'm like, I'll pay somebody. I'm like, hey, man, just teach me this <laughs> or do the task. Because I'm like, I don't want to spend hours and hours trying to figure this out. It's kind of like, I'd rather have somebody teach me how to do something faster 
or just get them to do the task itself. Because I think one of the most important things that we have in this life is time. Even if you live to 109, I'm pretty sure, you know, it's like you still want to make sure you maximize the time that you do have on this earth and that I, I don't want to spend it constantly trying to figure stuff out, right? So it's kind of one of those things that I think is a great way to invest in yourself is learn different things, but learn from people that have already gone out and done it, right? Yeah, and it's also, do you have a proclivity for something? Do you have an interest? Or is this one of those things where you're like, oh, I can't wait to outsource, like cleaning, yeah. cooking. There's certain, some people love cooking. I'm like, cooking sucks. Like, <laughs> I hate it. To me, that's, that's a, you know, I could get someone else to cook. I could just eat out. I could do whatever. But yeah, do you have an interest to develop that skill? Is there a reason why? Because we all have these natural proclivities, these natural talents. And so we want to take advantage of that. Because if mm -hmm. I have a proclivity for finance, that's a skill that is going to be a lot more exciting to learn more about because, yeah. I'll, you know, my eyes will be open. My ears will be open. I'll be like, Ooh, that's cool. That's great. Versus uh, art. I'm just, I'm not an artist. I can't draw. <laughs> I, could I take classes to paint and draw and do this? Sure. But my best would probably not be very good. You know, yeah. like, I'd probably be the worst one in class. I'd get better, but I don't have an interest in it and I wouldn't do anything with it. And so if I don't find it enjoyable for myself and there's not a, a reason in terms of monetizing it, then I, I'd rather just hire an artist to, to you know, draw me nude or something. <laughs> <laughs> just draw you with your cock or just be like, yeah, oh, look at me, you know, it's yeah, modern but, day David or something. <laughs> yeah. I got Leonardo DiCaprio to, to draw me, uh, paint me nude. Yeah, there you go. But no, you're right. Cause it's kind of like certain tasks where you're, it's like, it's the mundane, man. I, I don't want to do these things, you know, I just like even figuring out like the basics of video editing and stuff like that. I'm actually, I, I like it and it's a skill and it's a hobby and something that I'm developing, I guess, but it's one of those things where it's like, okay, well, this kind of comes to the territory of creating content. Right. So I'm like, I enjoy this, you know, I got to get rid of, you know, some preconceived notions that I had that were kind of limiting beliefs. Now I got to let go of that, start working on this, you know, and, and, and form new habits and whatever. But you're right. I don't want to clean. I hate cleaning. My wife, I don't know if she actually likes cleaning, but she's always cleaning. You know, So I'll leave it to her and I'll just try to pass the buck like, oh, yeah, yeah, I don't want to do this. I got stuff that I got to do. But I, I really don't you know, dislike it. And if I could, obviously, I would just pay somebody to clean 24 seven. But the other thing that I wanted to, to touch on, too, which is a very interesting point that I had here was the 13 ways to save money and to invest more in themselves. So this is um, how do you go about actually, you know, saving the money? Like you talked about waste. What are other things that people can do? And then obviously taking that money to invest in themselves. Oh, man. OK, so there is there's a lot. We actually have a, a guide, which is 51 plus quick hitting hacks for saving Damn. big money with tiny effort. And I mean, you talk about attention and intention. It goes from I, I mean, I'll give you one example because there's way more than 13. But I'll, I'll give you a really good example that I, I used recently. And it, this was four hundred dollars a year savings on cinnamon. Okay, so so here right. I know this is crazy. So, all right, if you're in the health space, you know you have your spices because spices help you out, right? You know, yeah, like, yeah, because you're not putting on mayonnaise and butter and oil, but spices can really liven up food. And so I I love my oatmeal. I have my overnight oats. I, I try and get the uh, phytic acids out, and so I I load up my oatmeal every day with cinnamon. I love these little <laughs> rice cakes as well. I've fallen in love with oh, rice yeah. cakes. So put a little peanut butter on there or almond butter, little cinnamon on there. Uh, on my high carb days, I, I love rice checks. It goes back to um, when my first ever diet was just bowls of cereal. So rice <laughs> checks, you know, it's not corn. It's not like these other things. So it's more, it's pure, right? It's not yeah. organic, but it's still pure. So I throw on rice checks, a bunch of cinnamon. I was going through one of these little two ounce cinnamon jars every five days Damn. so five days through a whole cinnamon jar okay that, that's a lot but these organic cinnamon jars are about six dollars each i, I mm -hmm. forgot the name of the brand i think it's a simply or or simp something but it's from whole foods or whatever it's about six bucks for this and i realized wow i'm going through one of these every five days i did the math i think it was oh i i would, I would have to do the, the math again it was something like $500, so, something like that, absurd yeah. a year. And I said, there's got to be a better way because I, I can't justify, uh, you know, let's see, five days, to six. So that would be 36 bucks a month on cinnamon. That's that's stupid. 
And I go on Amazon and I was just like, all right, well, there's got to be some more bulk options. I found this five pound bag of organic cinnamon for $29.99. And I was like, five pound bag. And so wow. when you really like th this would be the, the real tip is when you look at the cost, it was $2, I want to say $2.94 per ounce of the organic cinnamon uh, that I was buying at Whole Foods. The organic cinnamon in the five pound bag on Amazon was 37 cents an ounce. Same cinnamon, 37 cents. So when you look at 37 cents an ounce versus $2.94 an ounce, it's like six times the price just because it's in a little jar at Whole Foods. I'm paying for convenience. I'm paying for Whole Foods' overhead and I'm paying for a little yeah. jar that's a lot more convenient than a big five pound bag. But that one little thing, that one little hack, it was over $400 a year savings. And, and that's one thing that's, that's okay. Now, wh like, wh what is the cinnamon in your life? You know, not, not yeah. you personally, but out there, if you're listening, what is the cinnamon? Is it the, the Starbucks? Is it the, uh, you know, the Postmates? Is it just one little, one food, uh, you know, I, you buy a lot of avocados and avocados are expensive and you waste uh, one out of three avocados because they all go ripe at the same time. Yeah. And then one, uh, and then instead of opening it up and freezing it, because you can freeze avocados and put them into mm -hmm. smoothies and they're amazing. But it, you know, you do that one thing and all of a sudden you realize, man, that's, that's 300 bucks a year, 400 bucks a year. And so uh, I have a guide of like 80 different little things. Um, I will mention a few others though, because I have a huge appetite. I love to eat healthy, but also when you travel, it's the very, it's like the toughest thing to go to a city, especially if you're going from a healthy city where you, you know, your grocery store, you know, your health spots to let's say the Midwest in December or in January, <laughs> which I've done many times. And all that's around is KFC and McDonald's and convention center foods, which I, I that, that, that's where this comes in. There's a device called the Hot Logic Mini. So if you look this up on Amazon, this is like a $40 little portable heating plate that fits one of those six cup Pyrex containers. Right. You know, those glass yeah, yeah. containers with the, those fits it perfectly. And I would heat up my oatmeal. I would go to Chipotle and get just the rice, the beans, a, a lean meat, just the healthiest option from Chipotle. I would heat it up. And I would also drive from LA to Vegas and be able to heat it up in my car. And so this this little one little gadget for 40 bucks has saved me thousands of dollars, but also mm -hmm. helped me eat the foods I want to eat versus being like, ah, I guess I got to spend $20 on the chicken tenders and fries. Like <laughs> everyone else was doing that. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'll go to Chipotle and get the triple stuffed bowl with the rice and the beans and the healthy stuff. Or I'll go to the grocery store and pick out some healthy foods, put it in here. But, um, you know, like to me, it's always about how can I make this healthy? How can I make this more affordable? W what am I not seeing? And a lot of people don't even realize how many amazing little ways you could save money. And yeah, like, like the issue is that when people go, oh, I can't afford a personal trainer. I can't afford a coach. I can't afford this. Like, I bet you can. Mm -hmm. have, let let, let yeah. me show you that you can, because I guarantee you, you have not tried all of these 81 things, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, it's, I mean, to your point too, I mean, I started doing that with oatmeal actually, because that's kind of one thing that we do too, is like the day old, or yeah, the, we, what do they call it? Day old oats, I think, where we kind of just o leave overnight oats. And, yeah, that's it. That's it. I'm like, oh, yeah, day old. Always ruined. I'm like, they're not day old. It sounds like they're just kind of rotten. <laughs> but <laughs> see, from a marketing perspective, day old <laughs> oats sound like it's like going bad. Overnight yeah. oats sounds like you could charge more for it. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, you know, that doesn't sound good. It doesn't sound appetizing at all. It's, it's like it's no, it's aged, <laughs> aged like a fine wine. You know, it's fine aged wine. oats. In my case, it'd be like, oh, we want the crusty oats from yesterday. But <laughs> but honestly, no, you, you're right, because we did start to take inventory, my wife and I, and we're just like, dude, like, why are we buying small quantities for things that we're going to be needing a lot of? Like, for me, it's kind of like, I, I'm a coffee addict. And I think that's one of those things where I'm like, I made peace with it, because, you know, sometimes... There's certain studies that come on and say coffee is bad. And there's other studies that say coffee is good. I'm like, I don't care. I love coffee. 
I, maybe it's a Costa Rican thing. Like we've had it since like forever, you know? So I'm like, I'm just, I'm sticking with coffee. So I always buy like at least two kilograms worth of coffee. Right. So mm. I make sure that I always have that stocked up, you know, the oatmeal and all that, but you're hundred percent right. Cause we started realizing the same thing to your point with avocados too. Avocados are expensive and it's like, they go ripe and then you chuck two away. And you're like, wait a minute, man. Or even the strawberries, same point. I'm like, yo, I'm freezing this from now on. Like we buy two. I'm like, I'm freezing one. <laughs> Dude. Like, Avocados, they're a fortune, and I'll always freeze them if I get them, just because I, I like to waste a three dollar avocado where half of it is a giant seed is annoying. Yeah. So there's that. I'll I buy frozen fruits, organic, because so so this was one of the hacks, and this was years ago when I realized that uh, berries are a part of the dirty dozen. Right. The yeah. dirty dozen, the foods that you should have organic because it's most susceptible to pesticide. So I was having a cup of strawberries and a cup of blueberries in my daily smoothie years and years ago, not organic. And then I said, oh, crap, this is part of the dirty dozen. I need to get organic. And I realized that what I would be spending per month on organic berries would be one hundred and twenty dollars. I was like, well, man, this is this is two ingredients of a daily smoothie for 120 bucks. That's, that seems a bit excessive. And that's when I switched to, or uh, bananas, I switched to bananas and I know bananas have higher sugar, mm -hmm. uh, doesn't have the fiber, doesn't have all that, but a month's supply of organic bananas is $12. So for me, I said, all right, 120 versus 12 is the hundred dollar savings worth the higher sugar and lower fiber. But still to me, fine for what I want. And I said, yes, at this point, I will take the bananas, but that's, and then bananas, you could easily freeze, but they're such a dirt cheap fruit. It's one yeah. of those things where if you're going to waste something, a banana is great because the worse it gets, the better it gets for smoothies and banana bread. Yeah, so like, no, yeah. It can get br brown and moldy and whatever. <laughs> but if you have to throw a banana away, it's literally like 20 cents each at Trader Joe's, which is a grocery store here in Southern California. And then if you throw in away berries, it's like for organic berries, like $5 for those for one little carton. I mean, that's, that's a lot, especially if you're doing one of those a week. Again, it's just, it's one of those things where one little change like that could be 200, $300 per year back in your pocket. And then one more thing on coffee I love coffee. I love it. And I am that Starbucks person. And it's I don't do the, the Frappuccinos or any of that. But if yeah. you are a Starbucks drinker out there, here's my amazing hack, which I learned from uh, a barista. So if you bring your own reusable cup, I'm holding it here. If uh, you're you're listening, I'm holding it here. If you bring your own reusable cup, and you're a part of the rewards program, you get 25 points just for having your drink in your reusable cup. So uh, the cool thing about it is that with intermittent fasting, I'm just yeah. getting coffee, Americanos or espresso. I'm not doing, or tea. I'm not doing any of the, the fancy lattes or anything. But even if you are and you use one of these cups, you'll get 25 points for that. After, uh, so it's 400 points, which would be, no, no, sorry. Is that 25 points? Yeah, yeah four, 200 points, which would be eight drinks. You get a free uh, a free coffee so no no or a free latte yeah. i gotta look it up it, it's crazy it's 25 points for using this plus the points for how much you spend and four by four you get a coffee free by eight get any drink you want free so start so i remember those punch cards back in the day it's like yeah buy, yeah yeah get one free this is literally the hack to get buy four coffees get your fifth one free or buy eight coffees and get your whatever fancy lots of drink yeah so, so if you look like i literally have if i'd show you right now i think 4400 starbucks points so it's like 44 free coffees <laughs> that i could get just because i go there every day i yeah. work from starbucks and if i work from home i would make my own but because i work from starbucks i'm gonna uh you know support them contribute yeah, yeah which is understandable but the thing is too it's like and I was learning about that too, about the credit cards too. Like there's certain credit cards. How many? Four. Oh, 4,358 points. Just wanted to show that real quick. You got all kinds of points, man. I mean, I'm going to have to go hang out at Starbucks with you. <laughs> if you come to LA, you know, the round's definitely on me. Yeah. It's like, I'm going to get the mocha latte frappuccino or whatever, yeah. you know, the stuff I never get, but. <laughs> yeah. What's the most expensive drink you have here? 
Yeah, it's like that unicorn drink they had for a bit. I remember that thing was just loaded. I looked into the calories it had, but. <laughs> Dude, I mean, talking about getting healthy, uh, when I sit there and I see these drinks that people get, it's like yeah. literally if you just ditch the Frappuccino and you just went, if you did intermittent fasting, especially, and you got used to black coffee or espresso, like uh, that was a big switch for me. If you just do that, you're probably cutting out 300 calories a day. But yeah. Anyway, yeah. back to your point. No, I mean, well, talking about the drinks, man, the drinks are probably one of the most, I think, insidious things in people's diet. And it's kind of like when we just cut out the drinks, like the lattes, the frappuccinos, the pumpkin spice, this, like my son was bugging me one day and he's like, I want a pumpkin spice latte. I'm like, sure, let's go get it. And I look at him like 450 calories. I'm like, you can drink half of this and share the rest with me and your mom, you know, like it's too much. And it's, I mean, in terms of what is bad for your health and your finances, these lattes are getting really expensive to the yeah. point where Starbucks is actually now the affordable option. Starbucks is actually just middle of the road. And then these independent coffee places, yeah, they have dude. like $9 lattes. And then they're really good at uh, having some designs on it. So people will want to pay a fortune just to post on Instagram. But just like you're paying so much for <laughs> empty calories fat sugar and then like all the things that we're addicted to you're paying a lot of money yeah. for something that's highly addictive that's bad for you so it's like that and that's why intermittent fasting was really big for me because it just it forced me to get used to the taste of black coffee or espresso which is more mm -hmm. affordable and way better for my health and you don't need as much i will say if you haven't intermittent fasted out there not saying it's right for everyone but for me what i loved is that I didn't need as much caffeine either because it's not going through this 800 calorie breakfast that I'd always have to have. And if I didn't have the big breakfast, I would just feel hungry. So this way I'm good up until two or 3 PM. Yeah, no, I mean, honestly, for me, intermittent fasting, everybody, I always view it like this, like whatever you want to use in regards to like, let's say lifestyle, weight loss, fat loss, whatever the case may be, it's kind of just find something that works for you. And I find that intermittent fasting for me has always been a seamless fit. You know, it's kind of a, I just skip breakfast, you know, and I have myself a black coffee or apple cider vinegar in the morning and I'm good to yeah. go. And especially like when I'll, I'll get into competition prep mode where it's like, I only got 1400 calories today. So, you know, I'm not going to eat till like three o'clock, four o'clock and have that small window and try to maximize it. And I you just feel better. You just feel better doing it. And I, and I do feel that you feel a lot lighter. Like one of my clients too, uh, Jared, he's always, that's the way he goes about it, man. He's like, well, you know, I'm down to 1700 calories. He's like, I just, you know, just wake up, black coffee, water, go about my day. And then I break my fast with like some good food. And, you know, that's just kind of the best way to go about it. But before you take off today, Brad, because we're already coming up on the hour. I couldn't believe it went by that fast, man. But I want you to tell us more about Empower Men itself, the company, what you do, what you're about, and tell us more about your partner as well and all the good stuff that you guys are about. Yeah, based on, uh, well, for one, thanks for having me, CJ. This has been fun. I can't believe the hour is almost passed as well. Yeah, I know. I was like, oh, geez. <laughs> yeah, man. But we got a lot in common. So I, I hope your audience appreciates it. Um, so Empower Men was created by myself and my partner, Gil, who's a top health coach here in LA. He was originally from Portugal and uh, his mother died in his arms from uh, all sorts of um, health related issues. And so he dedicated his life to health and helping uh, men and women get in better shape. And then combined with my journey of losing weight, but then also just seeing how people with a lot of money can afford the best health. And then it seems like the everyday working uh, father, husband, professional is always struggling with their health because money's an issue. And so it's like, well, I got you know, I got kids here, I got this career here, I'm just trying to afford my mortgage, I'm doing all this. And we said, well, look, there's got to be a way to empower the everyday guy, not just mm -hmm. the top five or 10% income earners, but just the everyday guy to get in better shape U using our backgrounds as coaches knowing, okay, small habits lead to great results over time, small habits financially, small habits with their health, do the same thing. And so we, we created this 90 day program to help a man go from 
I'm stressed out. I, I, my, I'm 30 pounds overweight, 40 pounds overweight. My testosterone's low. I'm overwhelmed with work. And I just don't even know how I'd be able to afford a personal trainer or afford organic groceries or afford peptide therapy or, or some of these cool new therapies that are life-changing. Mm -hmm. So we created a 90-day program to help a man save money lose weight, adopt these permanent habits, and then even make money on the back end, the more they transform. So what we have is the more they show up for themselves, the more results they see, the higher of a commission they can actually earn because we want them to be the the billboard for our transformation. And we say, all right, if you want to share this with others, you better put in the work and see the results first. And then you're, you, we'll give you a more, uh, you know, a higher commission so that your coworkers and your friends and other people in your life, other men in your life can benefit as well. And so uh, it's been very fulfilling seeing um, some guys that go, hey, I got two kids. It's the holidays. This is the crazy time of the year for me, for them to lose 25 pounds in the first five weeks and say, yeah. I didn't realize I had this time. I didn't realize I was spending all this money in these areas. Thank you for opening my eyes to this. And now if I can get this done during the holidays with little kids and with this crazy career, this is going to be so much easier in February and March and April when things uh, slow down for me. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, definitely happy to, um, you know, it, it's been really fun to to see these men's lives change. And any listeners out there, I definitely want to give you uh, and your audience, uh, you know, an extra discount, extra bonus so that, uh, you know, if it's a good fit for you that, you know, you can take advantage of. 100%, man. But I'll be sure to have all the links always in the description. And honestly, I, I power to you because I think this is the perfect combination where I think guys want to learn more about this. I mean, obviously, we want to get our finances right, we want to get our health right, we want to get our minds right. And I think it's one of those things, you know, we didn't really touch on like, I, well, we kind of did like how a lot of men are just suffering in silence as well, which is one of the things that I think that community aspect is nice, right? I think a lot of guys need that, have somebody to talk to. So no, kudos to you, Brad. And honestly, I can't wait to have you on the show again, because I'm pretty sure there's another million things we could probably talk about, man. But this is really enlightening. And I'll make sure all the links are in the description. And again, thank you for coming on the show, man. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thanks so much, CJ. And with that, guys, until the next episode.